quiz. What did all of those shots have in common? Was it A, they were all shot on the same lens, B, they were all stock footage, C, they were all filmed with a tripod, or D, they were all shot handheld? You have three seconds. I'm like trekking through Shrek Swamp over here. If you picked option D, that means you read the title of this video. Congrats, I guess. If you picked option A, you were also right. It's kind of an easy question, but today we're talking about getting that smooth handheld footage with a camera? With, oh shoot, I forgot the title of this video. We're talking about getting smooth handheld footage in five easy steps. That's what I was missing. So we've all been there. You just shot something awesome. Get back to your computer, slap that SD card in there, take a look at your footage, and it's just like, it looks like you were filming during an earthquake or a bug started crawling on your arm or something. Trust me, no one hates this more than me. So today we're gonna be going over five easy steps for getting smooth handheld footage. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be going over is body movement. So contrary to what you might think, cameras are not inherently shaky. Like if we put it on a tripod, if we put it on the ground, it's not gonna shake. So the core of the problem is us. Our hands are causing that shake. We need to eliminate the problem at the source, so let's start by correcting what we're doing wrong. So when you're shooting handheld footage, starting down with your legs, get your feet firmly planted, you know, about shoulder width apart, right? This doesn't have to be an athletic football player, linebacker stance, but just feel balanced, feel comfortable moving around. You don't wanna be wobbling all over the place. After that, you wanna grab your camera with both hands, one on the grip, one under the lens, this is a stable way to shoot. Don't be doing any of this one-handed stuff or sideways or, you know, whatever the influencers are doing these days. All right, no one ever shot anything smooth and cinematic like this. All right, and then when you're holding your camera, you wanna lock your arms and pull them towards your chest. This just comes down to basic physics. When the camera's closer to your body, it's gonna be easier to keep it smooth. All right, and the last thing you need to do is only move with your lower body. It really is all in the legs. All right, you don't wanna be swinging your arms back and forth. You just wanna do subtle movements, moving back and forth, left and right. Now, I've never done yoga, but when I'm filming with my camera, it feels like I'm doing yoga. Like you're stretching out, leaning, moving with your entire body. Your arms, I mean, look at these. They're like, they're noodles. They're not gonna hold your camera steady. You need to lock them off and move with your entire body. Pulling off shots like this is gonna take some practice, but you would be shocked at the difference this makes. Now, just moving your body a little bit different should make a huge difference. But if you're not quite getting the results you want, we're talking about camera stabilization next. So in body and electronic, both are super useful. Now, cameras like GoPros have mind boggling stabilization. The hyper smooth stabilization in GoPros it's out of this world. But even DSLR and mirrorless cameras have adopted some form of this technology as well. If you're shooting video, IBIS or in-body stabilization can be super, super helpful. Now my camera, the EOS R doesn't have that, but it has digital image stabilization. So what it's doing is cropping in a little bit on the image and using that extra detail, that extra information to smooth out the shot digitally. It's very similar to warp stabilizer. If your body movements aren't totally stable or you had just a little too much caffeine before shooting, camera stabilization is your next line of defense. But what if your camera doesn't have stabilization? You're still just not getting smooth enough shots. Well, it turns out your lens choice could actually make all the difference. So there's a couple things at play here. As a general rule, the wider your lens, and we're not talking aperture, we're talking focal length here. So the wider the lens, the bigger the field of view, the more stable your shots. For instance, if I shoot handheld at 16 millimeters, there's almost no shake. But if we switch over to 50 millimeters, you're gonna notice a lot of little micro jitters. Additionally, if your lens has optical stabilization, this is gonna help even further. Now you'll know it has this if you've got an additional switch on the side, which says like OS or stabilizer or something along those lines. And this will get rid of all of your micro handheld movements. Like it's not gonna eliminate the big shakes, but any little jitters that are really distracting, gone. This is personally my absolute favorite form of stabilization. It is so, so helpful. And by now, you should be good. Like if you've applied 
two of these techniques, your footage should be looking a lot better. But we can always do more. So here's another technique. It might not technically be handheld, so don't roast me in the comments. Look, I'm just trying to help you guys out. So my next tip is either adding extra weight to your camera or an additional point of contact. So the first idea is attaching a counterweight to the bottom of your camera. For all intensive purposes, a tripod sort of just makes the most sense. You could use anything. I'd just use a tripod. But the idea is that extra weight gets rid of a lot of shaky movement that's associated when you're just holding something super light. This is going to take a little practice. You want to avoid getting some pendulum like movements, but this is a really effective way to get rid of some of that shake. And the other part of this tip is just using a camera strap as a third point of contact. Now, personally, I never do this, not because it doesn't work, but because I just never carry a camera strap on me for shooting video. It just feels like they're always in the way. But when it comes to getting handheld footage, this is super effective. The idea is you hook the neck strap up to your camera, pull it out so it's taut, and with those three points of contact and a little bit of tension in the camera strap, it really helps stabilize that camera. And if all else fails, it never hurts to add just a little bit of post stabilization in your editing software. Actually, I take that back. Sometimes it can hurt. The general rule with post stabilization is garbage in, garbage out. This is not meant to fix the shots that you messed up. It's meant to polish them off. It's that last 5%, the cherry on top, to just make your shots super smooth. Now, it's not always going to work, which is why it's super important to do these tips correctly in the first place. But after you've used it a few times, you sort of get that sixth sense for which shots are going to work, which ones aren't. Warp stabilizer or, you know, whatever it's called in your editing software is a really, really powerful tool for just adding that little bit of finesse, that little bit of a floaty feeling, just super, super smooth shots. Oh, and I almost forgot, so here's a little bonus tip for you. If you shoot at a high frame rate, so 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, or higher, you can always slow down your footage in post, which makes a really big difference for smoothing out that footage. I feel like I've said that same line like 17 times in this video, but it's true. Now, depending on what you're shooting, you can't always just slow down the clip, right? Like if someone's talking, or you know, for whatever reason, it's not supposed to be in slow motion. This doesn't always work, but I thought I'd throw it out there because if you're shooting B-roll or just detail shots or product shots, this is super, super powerful. Like this makes a big difference. Anyways, that's it for me. If you've been struggling to shoot handheld, hopefully this helps you out. Shooting handheld can be super, super fun. Just sort of run and gun and rip and make some cool stuff. But if your footage comes out shaky, it can be just really, really heartbreaking. So hopefully this helped you out. And as always, have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.